Good morning. Thank you for being here for the release of the Annie E. Casey Foundation's 2017 Kids Count Data Book. Um, this book ranks the states um, on child well-being. I'm Linda O'Neill. I'm the director of the Tennessee Commission on Children and Youth, and the commission is honored to be the uh, Casey Foundation's Kids Count partner in Tennessee. Today we're very pleased the report um, presents Tennessee's best ranking ever at 35th. Um, it is an improvement from 38th last year. Each year when we receive the Kids Count data book at the Commission on Children and Youth, we look closely at the data to see what has been going on in Tennessee that has made a difference and that contributes to the changes in the rankings. Um, the report provides state rankings across four domains, economic, well-being, education, health, and family and community. And within each of those four domains, there are four indicators. So there are a total of 16 indicators on which the states are ranked. Um, our review this year concluded that the state's improvements in the rankings are a result of the economic development and the education initiatives of Governor Haslam's administration. Governor Haslam was elected first in 2010, which is the baseline year for the data in this report. So under his leadership, Tennessee is recognized as a national leader in education, economic development, econ uh, efficient government, and fiscal strength. So today it is my honor to introduce Governor Bill Haslam, who with his wife Chrissy have provided significant leadership for progress in Tennessee and especially for Tennessee children. The governor and the first lady have been married for 35 years. They have three children and six grandchildren, so they know very well the importance of what we do for Tennessee's children. Governor Haslam, thank you for being here. Thanks, Linda. Thank you, and Linda, thank you for uh, you and the commission's work on behalf of children. I want to make a couple of points. Number one, we're pleased that this is Tennessee's highest ranking ever. Number two, we are not satisfied with being number 35. Um, that is, uh, while, like I said, we're, we're, we're thrilled to see we're moving forward, uh, we think we can be a lot better than that, and I'm willing to bet uh, that next year uh, and the year after that, you will continue to see Tennessee moving up in these rankings. A couple of points I'd like to make. Number one, data matters. Uh, I love that the Casey Foundation actually says there are things, there are metrics we can measure about the well-being of children. Now some people might say, I wish they would count this more, or do this or that, but regardless, these are the metrics they use and they matter and, and they're ones that tell a story. The second point I'd make is this. I think you, what you've seen the focus of our administration been, uh, uh, be is around education and jobs. And that, at the end of the day, if you look what drives numbers of children, that's what drives the economic well-being of children. Our low points are still too many children living in high poverty situations. Uh, we're still, while we've made big progress uh, in education, we, we still have some room to move there. Uh, but they're very specific things that we know that we can measure. Uh, finally, I would just say this. Um, this is a situation where um, Tennessee, I think, is uh, pointed in the right direction. The progress that we've made over the last several years, I think you're going to continue to see. Uh, and I'm very grateful for the partners we have in, in the Commission, uh, in the Department of Children's Services, and then also in our partners in K-12 education and higher education. This is a long uh, but sure process, and we're grateful that this is another reminder that Tennessee is on the right step. So thank you very much. Thank you, Governor Haslam. We appreciate your emphasis on data and know that it is making a difference in improving outcomes for children. We're really thrilled that the focus of this administration has resulted in measurable improvements for Tennessee children and families. So um, the Tennessee Department of Education has played an important role in improving outcomes for Tennessee children. I am now delighted to introduce Commissioner Candace McQueen from the department to talk about some of the important things they've been doing. It is an honor to be here to uh, celebrate really the work that we've done over the last several years with a collective effort, as you can see, across state government agencies under the leadership of Governor Haslam and the First Lady. In particular, we can see in this data that our focus on improving math, our focus on improving reading, um, thinking about the quality that is across every single classroom, regardless of where the students start, has been um, a, a predictor of the outcomes that we have had. 
We also see that raising standards, creating an aligned assessment, creating an accountability system that wraps around that particular set of standards and assessment matters, and ensuring that we have high quality teachers as the center of our work also matters. This data also points to where we can improve. And we know that continuing to dig deeply in the quality of our pre-K programs and access for pre-K is something that we should continue to talk about as a state. Uh, we can say this year we are very proud that we have improved the quality of our pre-K programs more than we ever have since the existence of pre-K in the state by changing our application process and focusing on making sure the students who need it the most are being served in the pre-K classrooms that we have um, across Tennessee. We also see in our data, and I'm not going to steal Mike's thunder, but we have this focus on access to post-secondary education, and that has mattered for K-12 opportunities. Um, kids today are saying, I have an opportunity that I did not have several years ago, and it has changed the way I operate and the way I think about my uh, potential in my K-12 um, setting. We see that everywhere. I was in Sevier County, and I heard a student directly say to me, because I know there is a Tennessee promise, I am acting differently in high school than I was. I see that these matter, these courses that I'm taking matter, the knowledge that I'm gaining matters, I'm improving my writing skills because it matters, because I see an opportunity that I didn't see before. Those are the success stories that actually are the contributing factors to why this data is moving. We are not satisfied with 35, as the governor said, but wow, this is much better than where we've been in those bottom 40s, and we're continuing to track forward with this progress, and I'm thrilled that we can celebrate this today as a state. And thank you so much for the work you do. Thank you very much, Commissioner McQueen. We're really pleased with the progress that your department's making around pre-K and around reading and math. And um, we know that many of the things that uh, began with really books for birth and read to be ready and, um, and the after school programs and all make such a difference in improving outcomes. So thank you for all you're doing for, uh, for Tennessee children. Um, I'm now pleased to introduce Mike Krause, who is the Executive Director of the Tennessee Higher Education Commission. And Mike has played an important role, as Commissioner McQueen has suggested, in helping more Tennesseans attend post-secondary education. So, Mike. Thank you. Uh, what I'd like to say is, when we launched Tennessee Promise, we really did that with the hope that we would change the narrative about college access in the state. And to Commissioner McQueen's point, that students would start to view their future differently. I think there's an important finding in this report relative to the number of teenagers who are both out of a job and out of school. That number decreased significantly in 2015, which was the first year of Tennessee Promise. So we know that along the way on this journey towards our Drive to 55 goal, we're going to see indicators that tell us right direction or do we maybe need to course correct. And I would say in this report, we are seeing some indications we're absolutely headed the right direction. Uh, on behalf of higher education, I think one of the things though that we need to be focused on over the next few years is being a better K-12 partner. Having happy and healthy children, as this report indicates, that matters for higher education. Higher education also has a role that we need to support K-12 better in, and that's in teacher preparation. And Commissioner McQueen and I have been working closely along with Dr. Habern at the, at the Board of Education to ensure that our colleges of education are preparing teachers in the best possible way to go out and serve children and families in our communities. We're going to keep working at it. The other thing we need to do better in higher education, and I think we're uh, focused on this with a laser focus, and that is making sure that the first year of college looks differently for students and that we're going to be able to pivot soon. We've had so much of a narrative the last few years about higher education access. And I would argue there are data points in this report that show us we're making significant progress on higher education access. We've got to pivot now, and we've got to continue to be focused on success and making sure that that first year of college experience for students, that we make sure that transition is right for the first generation low income student, for the student that finds higher education to be their vehicle into the middle class. So one, grateful to Dr. O'Neill and her staff for the opportunity to talk about this. It helps us greatly to have an independent set of data to say we're moving in the right direction. And two, look forward to continuing the dialogue over the next few years. Being ranked 35 right now isn't good enough, but I will tell you, I think it's progress that shows us we are en route to 55 and I'm grateful for your partnership. So thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. We really appreciate you being here and the difference you're making um, in improving access to the, the kinds of skills and education people need for the jobs of the future. 
Um, improvements in child well-being are the result of good public policies and initiatives um, and often what's called a two-generation strategy. We know we have to continue to do better as all the previous speakers have said. We can, can do better than, than 35th and we will do better with the, kinds of, uh, the kind of trajectory we're on in terms of improving outcomes for children and families. Um, we know we have to um, help improve the health and education outcomes for children and often one of the most effective strategies to do that is what's called a two-generation strategy. We help their parents uh, be better parents, be, uh, have the job training, the skills, the education they need for secure employment, for stable housing, for the kinds of uh, circumstances that can help their children thrive. Governor and Mrs. Haslam and Deputy Governor Jim Henry have provided leadership for Building Strong Brains, Tennessee's ACES initiative. As we continue economic development and educational efforts, Building Strong Brains will focus on preventing, whenever possible, adverse childhood experiences. Things like um, child abuse and neglect and family dysfunction, like uh, domestic violence and parental incarceration, mental illness, substance abuse. Um, and when we can't prevent those things, to help the services and communities and providers and everyone who comes in contact with children and families wrap services and supports around them to mitigate the impact of those adverse childhood experiences and help them be successful as adults. We know this benefits their, um, their strengths for the workforce, their long-term health prospects, even their longevity. So continued improvements um, for Tennessee children are on the horizon um, and we're making a lot of progress as has been demonstrated by this effort and so we look forward to continuing to improve in the rankings as we drive to 55 and drive um, the rankings for Tennessee ever higher and better for Tennessee children. So as we close today, um, I want to thank the media for being here and for all the people who are in the audience and especially to thank the people who've made presentations here, our panelists.